is being tested in the dark skies above Area 51. It turns out that various agents of ours were able to procure Russian military hardware. This means entire MiG fighters, radar, air defense systems, etc. Obviously, certain people in certain governments and militaries behind the Iron Curtain were corruptible, and somehow the stuff ended up at Groom Lake. And there were squadrons of guys called Red Hats, who were American pilots who flew MiGs. Possessing your enemy's weapon and taking it apart is hugely useful to you. This is a great coup. And it turned out that was an important thing going on at Groom Lake. That was really a highly kept secret. But Russian MiGs and the Red Hat Squad weren't the only secrets being kept at Area 51. When you follow Groom Lake into the 70s, then you start getting into the era of stealth. And this is when they have blue planes were developed and tested at Groom Lake. They call them technology demonstrators. And the idea was, hey, we figured out that you can really manipulate radar reflections by having these flat, faceted surfaces so the thing looks like somebody's diamond ring. But what is it going to fly? Well, okay, you better build one and try that out before you order a whole bunch of these. And the half blues were little two-thirds size kind of hand-built jobs that prove, yes, you can, you can make these things aerodynamic and controllable, and you can make them extremely hard to see on radar. And at the same time, Another really weird program, which was just declassified, called Tacit Blue, which is uh, uh, just an ugly, ugly device. It looked like a cross between a loaf of French bread and a snow shovel. And what these guys were trying to do was figure out uh, compound contours going beyond the flat, faceted stealth shapes and getting into a smooth, like your car body has nice rounded curves on it. From the Have Blue and Tacit Blue projects emerged the technology for America's most top secret aircraft to date. For years, there were reports of strange black wedges piercing the skies near Groom Lake. And rumors of a stealth aircraft decades ahead of its time. For once, it seemed the rumors about Area 51 proved to be more fact than fiction. But in 1988, the U.S. military officially unveiled the B-2 stealth bomber and the F-117 stealth fighter. The Air Force uses secrecy to shield advanced technology. The hope is that if we can keep something in the dark as long as possible, a potential enemy will not gain an advantage. Such was true with the stealth program. During the uh, testing of the F-117, everything evolved around working at night. The mechanics, the engineers, the pilots, everybody uh, adapted to living at night. The men who flew uh, the black jet, as it's called, they all were black. In February of 1991, the years of secret flights in the skies of the Nevada desert were put to the test over the desert sands of the Persian Gulf. The F-117, this, you know, this, this called the stealth fighter, it's actually a light bomber, uh, turned out to be very useful in the Persian Gulf War, and it works. As the world watched, V-2 stealth bombers and F-117 stealth fighters delivered an unprecedented and devastating reign of firepower on a stunned Iraqi army. Totally unaware that such weapons of mass destruction even existed. And today, the secrets of Area 51 continue. Rumors persist of a highly classified hypersonic aircraft known as the Aurora. Aurora is the name that uh, we researchers give to very fast aircraft which have been uh, developed and tested under, under black programs. Although no published photographs of the Aurora exist, there is no shortage of visual interpretations of this alleged high-tech spy plane. Based on revolutionary 
revolutionary propulsion technology, this aircraft is said to fly at six times the speed of sound and can attack with pinpoint accuracy. This is a pretty substantial step forward in aviation technology. What it means is you've taken a very big step towards true global war fighting. Um, you have put down the basis for technology which allows you not only to perform reconnaissance missions, but to perform um, precision strike um, anywhere in the globe within a very few hours of decision to go. Aurora would be a perfect fit with Area 51, because you need a big tract of land and a big base to support this aircraft and hide it, and that's what Area 51 is having. But to date, our government's position is unwavering. Officials insist that no such aircraft as the Aurora exists. And I can tell you that the committees, the appropriations committees of both houses, the Armed Services Committee, have investigated Aurora to be blue in the face. And Aurora does not exist. We wish we had an Aurora, a plane that could travel to Baghdad in three hours. It may be on somebody's drawing boards for such a technology, but right now, that does not exist. This culture of secrecy that surrounds Area 51 has inevitably led to a climate where nothing is too strange to be believed. And true believers have turned the area surrounding the base into a virtual convention center of conspiracy. This is breakfast, uh-huh. Toast.